Welcome to Canada. This is a pine tree. This is a palm tree. This is snow. Winter in Canada. This is a coffee. This is a beach. This is Carib. This is flamenco. This is a Spanish coffee. This is finding fish. Hey, good morning everyone. Hey, it's Mike Fisher from Finding Fish. And Jenny. Welcome to our studio and welcome to this vlog. Before we get started, I just want to say a huge uh, thank you to all the subscribers. Over a thousand subscribers on our channel now. Yeah. I just want to say thank you very much. You don't know what it feels like for a sub, for a YouTuber to try to get a thousand. It's so hard. It is so hard. And we cross the line. And if you haven't subscribed, please like and subscribe. It helps our channel. Anyway, on with the vlog. This vlog um, that we're doing today is all about Memories Carib and Memories Flamenco. All the questions that we get asked. Right. Every single day. Most people, when we're uh, looking at our questions, a lot of people say, what do you prefer, Carib or Flamenco? What do you recommend, Carib or Flamenco? Where should I go? So so we're just doing a follow-up yeah. on that. We just thought, oh, you know what? This would be a great video to do while we're still in Canada. Yeah. Anyway, let's get on with it. There's okay. going to be five categories that we're going to cover in this vlog. It's going to be coffee and drinks, food, resort, um, rooms, and the beach. Um, and we picked we picked these because those are the five that are important to us. And, and these are the five questions that we constantly get yeah. asked in reference to both resorts. Yeah. Uh, because Fair. these two resorts, the Memories Flamenco and Memory Carib, they're uh, sister resorts. They're very busy. Um, they have a lot of loyal fans. They have yeah. a lot of people that want to go. And they're next door neighbors. They're next yeah. to each other. Uh, considering that they're in Keokoko and it's very quick from the airport, uh, 20, 25 minutes, a beer, beer and a half. Um, or two or three, but uh, anyway, let's get on with it. Okay, coffee. If you've ever been to Cuba, you know coffee is very important. If you haven't been to Cuba, coffee is very, very important. <laughs> and so delicious. It's a massive industry in Cuba. They make a lot of coffee in Cuba. They sell a lot of coffee all over the world. The baristas in Cuba take their coffee and the coffee experience, cappuccino, latte experience, Spanish coffee experience, very seriously. Yes. Very seriously. It's a very, um, it's just part of a culture. Uh, and it's amazing if you're enjoying coffee. It's it's like you're like in an, it's an old fashioned vibe, the way that they, they prepare it, prepare it, to get it ready. Beans. It's, it's an ordeal. Yeah, it is. Um, it's like old European, but even better because I was just in Europe and they can't come close to what they produce and how they make coffee in Cuba. It is up there, folks. Anyway, let's go to Memories Flamenco. Two amazing places yeah. that you're going to get coffee. It's Bites and Bellini's. Twenty uh, Bites is 24 hours. Uh, yeah. And Bellini's, I believe, it could be 24 hours as well. It could be now. Mm -hmm. uh, but typically, if you get down there at 6 in the morning, it's it's not very busy at no, 6. No, they're just starting. They're just starting the process. Starting their day. And uh, everyone's just the new staff's coming on board. And... They make a, such a great cappuccino and such a good coffee there. Um, it's my favorite place uh, to start my day off is typically at Bellini's if I'm at the Flamenco. And then I get a coffee or maybe a Spanish coffee. And then I, if it's a gorgeous day out, I head up to Bites and I sit outside, um, listen to the birds. It's my favorite thing to do at Flamenco. What yeah. about you? Yeah, I mean, okay, so like, we have to be fair. I have not stayed at the Carib. Um, I've walked over there. So for me, flamenco is what I can comment about the coffee, but it's just how we start our day. And I think like the, the Cubans know that it's an important part of your day. They make it like a perfect coffee. I love sitting outside. Yeah. I like, we have one coffee generally at Bellini's, then we take a walk and go have one at Bites. So with uh, Memories Carib, it's the same deal. They have a Bellini's and they have a Bites. And they have a beans. Um, beans does specialty coffees as well and ice cream, but it doesn't open till 10, 10 o'clock in the morning. So if you're up for coffee, you're going to Bites. And uh, Bellini's, I believe, at, at Carib opens at 7. I could be wrong. could be 6, but 7. Um, and it's they take it very seriously there as well. The baristas there are fantastic. 
um, anyone watching this that yeah, you know they, they I think at crib they do more of the like they do designs and they're starting to do that now at flamenco as well oh, okay. but yeah they're they do all they do art on their cappuccinos yeah. and lattes um, and both resorts offer all the super drinks as like you know your rums your rum and cokes your older rums your vodka your vodka sodas your gin and tonics mm -hmm. Your Supermans. Yeah, all those fun mixy drinks. We don't drink a lot of those. They're really sugary. I don't know the names of all of them, but they have them. The slushy drinks and... And, uh, and they offer like them at pretty much um, not only at Bites and Bellinis, but they also offer a lot of good drinks down at the beach bars as well. So just so you know, the beach bars typically don't open till 10 in the morning, I believe. Yeah. Fish. Yeah. 10. So anyway, food... I think at both resorts is typically the same um, for most part. Where it changes a bit is down at the beach. Um, with Diamond Club at Carib is one of my favorites. Not only do they have a little place for you to sit and enjoy like your snacks and your food down there, but the little chef there, he's amazing. Both chefs at both places are amazing. I just want to say that. But um, when I was there, we had fresh fish every day. Mm -hmm. okay. um, like a little wee salad. It was very simple, very easy. Healthy. Healthy. Too. And not only that, like, you you know, it just had somewhere easy to sit and eat it while you were at the ocean. You didn't have to leave at all. And then they have the little beach bar right beside. So it made it simple. I like that. At the crib, at the other, um, just for regular members, when I was there, there was a few shortages. So they were missing wheat, I think, that week. So... Mm -hmm. I didn't even go over there, but you know, shortages come and go. Okay, let's talk about memories. Flamenco, the yeah. beach food. Well, we typically are Diamond Club, and the food there is always spectacular. And again, we don't need to leave the beach. We love the beach, so we don't generally like to leave. Uh, we've been there when they're having amazing seafood, and they'll cook it up with rice or polenta. It's just been delicious. And the past probably two years, I would say the beach food for for regular has not been great. But you said it's like totally different the last time you were there. They really were stepping it up. Well, but like because their budgets now are getting bigger, the resorts are full. When we were there earlier last year, the resorts were just coming off of COVID, yeah. and they were they were like to the bare bone for everything. So. Um, but you were there beginning of December. The yeah. food on the beach was, was Great. good. Yeah. It was excellent. Um, now, the food in both resorts, it's going to be typical. It's going to be typical Cuban food. It's going to be rice, tons of rice dishes. Um, beans. Beans. You're going to have salads. Um, and I actually have been seeing way, way more salads, greens, uh, broccolis, cucumbers. Okay. Um, you're starting to see a lot more uh, um, seafoods, yep. lamb, chicken, pork. Um, what else did they so once in a while you do have a lobster dish. So. Yeah, that's true. And oh. they have they have a huge selection of the antipasto. That's oh, like the salamis and the cheeses and the olives and the pickles. And yeah. So at the main buffets at both resorts are typically the same. Um, Flamenco is just a much bigger buffet than uh, Member's Crib. But the food that you get, the offering, is pretty close to the same. Let's talk about the resorts themselves, like the layout and sort of what to expect. So Flamenco, it's a pretty sprawling, pretty large resort, has about 10 buildings and uh, it's easy to navigate. It's fairly flat. Uh, it's uh, wheelchair accessible. Um, but think about the fact that it is for families. So there are going to be children. With Flamenco as well, they have four buildings that have ocean views. So that's building one, two, three, and four. My personal opinion, building two and three have the best ocean views, but so does four. Um, it's just not as good as two and three by far are the best um, it, from all floors. I believe number two has one through three. They're all great ocean views. Five, six, seven, eight, nine are kind of more country. They're, they're, in, the, they're in the gardens. So um, with Carib, uh, they have uh, the hotel's rooms and then they have uh, bungalows. The resort uh, at Carib is easy to get around. It's a boutique's feel size. Very easy. 
wheelchair accessible to the beach for sure. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they had a bathroom, but I'm pretty sure they would. Yeah. Um, but for sure, Flamenco has a wheelchair accessible bathroom, okay? Um, and people can get to beach easily on Flamenco through Diamond Club. They have um, like a... What is boardwalk. It? A boardwalk. And same with that building number four, they have a boardwalk. So if you want to get to the beach with your wheelchair, easy peasy. It. Same with that Carib, it's, I think you can easily get to the sand and the eating area in Diamond Club. Yeah. So just that being said, and I think that covers, uh, that covers the resort. The resort. Um, Flamenco, kids, Carib, adults only, yeah. small. Flamenco, bigger. bigger. For sure. Rooms, okay. So Flamenco, again, in all honesty, haven't stayed at the crib, so Mike can expand on that. But the Flamenco rooms are pretty much just a standard hotel room. There's nothing spectacular, nothing fancy, but at the same time, it's it's suitable. It's fine. It's uh, um, roomy, great bathroom, great shower area. Safe. Uh, safe, balcony, little couch area, yeah. fridge. And depending on what room you're in, you know, two double beds, maybe a king size bed, maybe, well, you've had a room. Triple yet. beds. Three beds. Um, yeah, now you even get a, a garden view, you're going to get a pool, or you're going to get an ocean view. Yeah. They also have suites. We, have you stayed in a suite? No, I saw the suite though. And okay. I, uh, yeah, the suite was actually huge. Yeah. So if you're getting married, you're doing a wedding, a massive anniversary, you need a place to go and yeah. hang out with people. Or you suites. are... A couple with three kids, four kids, yeah. you could stay in a suite as no, well. No, you just get two rooms. <laughs> Probably. Or three. Yeah. Um, with Carib, so they have hotel rooms and they have these bungalows. Yeah. And I was, uh, I had got a uh, diamond club, so I stayed in the bungalow. And I'll tell you, that was a great little experience if you just want to get away. Quiet, really nice, homey feel with couch, uh, a little uh, table with two chairs. You said you had an fridge, outdoor shower? Outdoor and indoor shower. Beautiful little wee bathroom in the setup. It's just, it, I really enjoyed it. Uh, if So Jenny and I are going to be there this year um, and we're going to be staying in one of those for sure. Really great. Um, they don't have ocean view rooms at Crib, but what they do have is lagoon views and it was nice it was adequate yeah. but I was close to the beach I was one minute walk so yeah so easy. that would be one thing I would say is that if you uh, have mobility issues and you're going to Flamenco um, it is sprawling so if you're in building like seven eight nine ten you definitely are gonna have more walking to do whereas the Carib definitely you're you're more centrally located right? easy yeah, yeah. totally so uh, it's an older vibe too I believe at the Carib compared to Flamenco Flamenco obviously because it's kid-friendly a lot of younger folks at the Carib. I was probably on the younger side. Both great places, though. <laughs> you well, were the younger I'm over side. 50 now, so hey, in my mind. <laughs> okay. Last but not least, and I think the most important, is the beach. Um, Jenny, That's why we go to Cuba. Why? Why do we go to Cuba? We just go for the beach. It's, I mean, not just the, the people, too, but the beach is second to none in my mind. It really is. Yeah. I love it. I the, love it there. The beach and the color of the water. Yeah. Especially if you go in, say, in the hotter months, um, the water just like, lightens up. Like, we've been there in the summertime, July, August. Um, we've been there every single month. The turquoise color blue of that water and the white, white sand, it's it's mesmerizing. It's beautiful. So, so considering we're beach people and we like to get away from everything, we love Flamenco Beach because mm -hmm. you can go either left or right and you can get away from lots of people. And if you like to beach walk, you can probably walk for 20 to 30 minutes in each direction easily. Easily. Even more to the right because yeah. you can go to Lenny's. Uh, well, you know, I didn't make it there, but you <laughs> can walk for as long as you want to. You can. Um, so, and it's not quite the same at Carib. You, you, I mean, we both walked to the Crib before, but you can talk about what it's like when you stay so there. So when the, with the Crib now, when it's low tide, you can walk out, left or right, amazing. When it's high tide, I find it's a little bit more challenging to walk to the right. You, it, people have the, been there, the beach narrows, the water comes up the beach quite a bit. So right. it's, it's not, if you're a big beach walker, yeah, it, may, it might not be for you. Is it gorgeous? Absolutely. Carib is absolutely gorgeous. Um, there's footage of both of them uh, on my videos. Like it's great and low tide is absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. That being said, we just want to touch on one other thing. The people. Right. The people at both resorts, they'll get to know you very quickly. Mm -hmm. And 
it's an amazing experience once you get to know these people. They know what you drink, how you drink it, when you drink it, where you are. And one other thing I just want to say, so people are amazing. Tips. Oh, that's a huge one. It comes up a lot. Coins. Coins are tough for people down in Cuba because they can't take a bag of coins to the bank. So yeah. what happens is we go there down there so much, we become the bank. They uh, want us to take their coins for our bills. Yeah, so right? the loonies and toonies work great, but uh, they can't take them to the yeah. bank. Fives and tens work amazing down there, folks. I'll have the same bartender. I'll have the same maid. I'll have the same guy at, at, uh, the, beach. at, at the beach. You know what? It, you tip as much or as little as you want. I typically go give them five, ten bucks at the start. Whenever I feel like I need to give some more, I do. I don't feel obligated to give a five dollar bill every five seconds. No. Um, you know, they do live and survive on tips, but tip as you will, but fives and tens are much more easily and would accessible. You say Canadian or American? Because that's another big question. Do they prefer Canadian or American bills? Canadian. They love Canadian. But okay. do I see a lot of American single dollar bills down there? Absolutely. Yeah. But fives and tens, they yeah. can go. They can go to the bank and put that into their bank account because they use now a, t a card in Cuba where they tap for everything, just yeah. like we do here. Yeah. And uh, that being said. Yeah, that's a good point. Anyway, if we've missed anything, leave us a comment. Yeah. Like and subscribe. Mike and Jenny, Finding Fish. We talk about Cuba. If you need to know more, let us know. And as always, if you want us to go check another resort out, we've got a few on our list that we're going to be heading to, but let us know where you'd like us to go next. Yeah, we're going. We're going to be in Cuba four times. Veradero, we're going to be in Santa Maria. We're going to be back. At the, we're going to go to Pullman. And I think I might even go to Ojoguin. Yeah. So we got lots coming up. Like and subscribe. Hit the notification. Stay with us because it's going to be amazing. Adios.